Good morning, folks. We're starting today with NASA's Earth Observatory detailing the increases in sulfur dioxide over India, especially at the hot spots. A couple articles about what could happen during a Washington state quake here. They say even a six magnitude rumble could cause serious underground shifts. I've also linked a complimentary article from a few months ago. China doing what we should all be doing when it comes to GMO food. If you missed last weekend's audio session, it's got some of my personal dissent on genetic modifications. Interesting link from the Tropical Rainfall Measurement Mission here projecting the week cycle forward, but also showing when they expect the craft to come to an end of its useful life, could be in the next year or two even, which is much earlier than I'd have guessed. Got a buoy in event mode next to where they took away my favorite one. It took a tiny event right about the time of their 5.6 earthquake that hit the general area yesterday. Zooming out, Laying the wind map on top, we see the convergence line of rain across Australia and New Zealand with the twin cyclones biding their time in the middle of the Indian Ocean. We have another system cresting onto Europe at this time. Last one caused extreme wind events along the west coast and possibly related was part of a London theater roof collapse during a show yesterday. However, any correlation to the hellacious weather is currently speculation on my part. Shifting slightly west, you can see why the west coast of the US is chilly, taking air straight from the north. Let's pull up the old wind map to better visualize the central convergence in the states breaking daily heat records out front, dipping us below average on the backside. I've also been keeping an eye on the South American precipitation totals and this too can be examined with the wind map. Equatorial heat and moisture carried right along that same swath that we've been looking at for a month now. Let's kick it to space weather. We're now more than two weeks without a gamma ray burst. They've seemed to come in sporadic bunches. Both neutrons and muons are currently rising, but cosmic rays in general are in normal range. Solar wind, average speed and density, but with a couple little density spikes visible and some southward pointing solar wind almost causing a perturbation in the field. We are somewhat holding with the sensitive metric showing modesty of the space weather. Once again, I make fun of the sunspots in the evening news and moments later, he tells me to shut the truck up. M3.5 solar flare emanating from the brand new active region cresting on the limb. My words were short and almost an afterthought, something to the effect of here come more spots to tease us all. While I've got little faith that the complexity and activity will remain through its earth facing position, but as for its limb position, Sunspot got the last lap this time. Anyway, the full disc is full of spots. Let's look at that flaring group on the limb first. Not major size or visible intensity, but clearly beta magnetic situation and they may be mixing further. The now departing group is big for being in week one of its life. We have multiple delta candidates in the center, but as of this morning, umbral bipolarity is not housed in one penumbra. Looking at Earth's connectivity to solar magnetics, we've crept across the positive groups which happen to be on the north right now, with the largest and closest portion to the equator apparently having those open fields at the end of it. Power is moderate right now, but something to watch is the departing group might shift its force around. Shots of our star to close, eyes open. No fear, it's 6.45 a.m. Eastern Time and that's the news. Be safe, everyone.